The first reading for today is from Isaiah, chapter 45. The prophet announces that Cyrus, the Persian emperor, is the one the Lord has anointed to end Israel's exile. The Lord makes this choice so that the whole world will recognize this Lord as the only God. Persia had a God of light and a God of darkness. The Lord claims sovereignty over both light and darkness. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces of the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Beside me there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm of the day is Psalm 96. We'll read it responsively as printed. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and great is the praise. More to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord and Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord all the earth. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. Today is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Most likely this letter is the first written by Paul. Paul is giving pastoral encouragement and reassurances to new Christians living in an agnostic pagan environment. Their commitment of love, faith, and hope makes them a model for other new Christian communities. Paul, Savannah, and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God, the Father, and the Lord, Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because of our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and to Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of these regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turn to God from idols, to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord.
The Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God accordance with the truth and show no difference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a Daenerys. Then he said to them, Whose head is this? And whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard Jesus say this, they were amazed, and they left him, and they went away. This is the good news for you this day. Today's gospel story is a trap. Jesus is fully aware that two leaders who can't really stand one another, one the Pharisee, the keeper of God's law, and one the Herodian, the keeper of the Roman law, walk into the temple together. You know this is a setup for a really bad joke. And the Jewish leaders think that the joke is going to be on Jesus. But Jesus knows us better than we humans do. Like if I was to ask you the question that the Pope recently asked a group of German Lutherans and Roman Catholics sitting in the same room together, he asked them this. What is better, a Lutheran or a Catholic? How would you respond? Well, already knowing that this is a setup, I might use Jesus' response. Well, are you putting me to the test, you hypocrite? But I really don't think I could actually have the guts to call the Pope a hypocrite or a phony or a person who acts contrary to his beliefs. How could I point my finger at the hypocrite when there are way more fingers pointing back at me? Did you know that the term Lutheran was once actually used as a dirty word? Or maybe you've heard it yourself this way. Oh, you Lutherans, you believe one thing and you do another. The word Lutheran actually began as an insult used by Martin Luther's opponents. And Luther actually discouraged his supporters from calling themselves Lutherans because he believed that they were really Christians, followers of Jesus Christ and not Martin Luther. Instead, this is actually what Martin Luther said about it. He said, what is Lutheran? The teaching is not mine. Neither was I crucified for anyone. I simply taught and wrote God's word. I did nothing. The word did everything. Therefore, if there was a word to describe the practices of the Christians who followed Martin Luther, they tended to use the word evangelical Christians which simply means we are to give witness to the good news. So how can we evangelicals 
we Lutherans, we hypocrites, if you will, be God's chosen witnesses if we believe one thing and we act another. Well, in our gospel story this morning, Jesus is tested to see which side he is really on. Will he be loyal to the Jews or will be he be loyal to Caesar? Now, this kind of trap never happens to you guys, right? You invite your friends over to watch the big game, and in walks one friend with a Bengals jersey, another with a Browns jersey, and they say to you, who are you cheering for? Or maybe you happen to be going to the big high school football game this week. You're going to be showing up wearing red for the Redskins or blue for the Rough Riders. And if that doesn't make you feel uncomfortable yet, in today's gospel story, Jesus is really being asked about money and taxes. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> so I might as well bring up the faux pas of topics to discuss in public settings. Politics. Are your friends going to ask you if this year you're going to be voting for the Democratic tax plan or the Republican tax plan? Because that's really the trap Jesus is being forced to answer here. No responses? <laughs> Silence? Yeah, that's probably the answer I would give too. But maybe your heart is just beating a little faster as you start feeling what it might have been like for Jesus to stand a pre-trial where his life depended on a simple response. And maybe you're starting to feel and understand the tension in the room when Martin Luther had to stand up and be put on trial for his writings and his life's work. You see, we 20th century spoiled evangelicals are really hypocrites because I don't think we fully understand what it is to risk our lives for the true gospel. Or maybe you do. Maybe you too would sacrifice everything for your child or for your family or for your church or for your country. Sacrifice your life so that others might have a chance at freedom. In the next few Sundays, I'm going to be lifting up this word that we like to throw around a lot in our culture today. And that word is freedom. One of Martin Luther's greatest writings, not just his 95 theses that we often talk about on Reformation Sunday. Yes, that was a very important document. But another very important writing that maybe you haven't heard about is the letter he wrote to the Pope entitled Freedom of a Christian. In 1520, Three years after he wrote the 95 Thesis, Martin Luther began to speak up against the leaders of the church because he felt their practices didn't line up with the biblical gospel we were to live and preach. And in it he writes, A Christian is perfectly free Lord of all, subject to no one, and... A Christian is perfectly dutiful servant of all and subject to all. Now, wait a minute. How can we be really free and a servant at the same time? How can we use our freedom to support both Catholics and Lutherans, both Redskins and Rough Riders, both Republican and Democrat? both Roman and Jews. Well, after Jesus was done calling them all hypocrites, he did answer their question. He said to them, give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and give to God the things 
that belong to God. Meaning, return your coin with Caesar's head on it to Caesar and give your loyalty, give your heart and your faith to the Lord. It seems like a simple belief that we Christians could practice and get behind, doesn't it? Except when it comes to our own true loyalties. Except when it comes to our own flesh and blood. The image of the head of a child or a spouse or a dear loved one that might come to mind for you. Yes, today we will celebrate a wonderful day of baptisms. Not just one, two, three, four, but five. I'm sure this is one for the books of Trinity, and I know it sure is for me. But when I began to tell people this week about these baptisms we were having, the response was excitement and joy and good news. Maybe we'll have more kids in Sunday school now. Maybe we'll have more parents in worship now. Maybe even more evangelicals out there in our community sharing the good news. But do you evangelical hypocrites really understand what we're practicing here today? When we receive each adorable child and we pour this water over their head, we are saying they are no longer ours. We are saying that they are God's child now. Yes, they are a gift to us to care for, to worship with, to grow in faith and love together, to walk through life together. But someday, we must give them back. Someday they will return to our Heavenly Father. And if we parents are still around to experience that day, it will be completely devastating to us. So where is the freedom and hope in that? Again, silence. Because our heads and our hearts experience this word of freedom in our culture where we are taught that we have the freedom to believe and speak and vote and really do whatever feels good. And that has nothing to do with God or asking God what he wants in all of that. But in the sacrament of holy baptism, we are bound, not by our feelings or emotions, but we are bound by the power of the Holy Spirit in it. And through Jesus Christ, we are also bound to care for one another, whether we agree, whether we like one another or not. So when the current Pope Ask a room full of Lutherans and Catholics. What is better, a Lutheran or a Catholic? This is what his response was. What is better is when they are together. What is better when we finally realize that the gospel story is not really about choosing between the Pharisees and the Herodians. The gospel story is not about Catholics or Lutherans and who is more loyal. The good news comes today in verse 22 when Matthew writes, The leaders heard Jesus' response. They were amazed and they left him and they went away. Now you might be wondering, how is that good news? It's good news because the greatest leaders are finally silenced. And they left. But Jesus stayed. The story is about loyalty, but not about the loyalty of the Pharisees and the Herodians. Not about the loyalty about parents bringing their children, either Catholic or Lutheran, to baptism. The story is about the loyalty of Jesus Christ. That never walks away from any test, from any disease, from any challenge we think we can't bear alone. 
Jesus not only doesn't walk away, but Jesus goes as far as putting himself on trial for you, being brutally beaten, and die on the cross for these hypocrites that walked away. Now that is good news, and that is what real freedom is all about. Real freedom is not about agreeing to disagree. Real freedom is not about the absence of heartache or pain or even death. Real freedom looks like you and I hypocrites gathering for worship, living through these days of hard times together, and still giving witness to the good news of our lives about grace and forgiveness to others. <clears throat> that Jesus Christ will stay with us until the end, when no one else will. So today, Jesus is not just promising these five children of God this morning that they are a child of God, but today Jesus is promising each and every one of you here today, that Christ will never walk away from you. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of this holy baptism. So it's by the water and God's word, God's promise, where he delivers us from sin and death and raises us up to new life in Christ. 
And it's also here where we are united in the baptized into one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Congregation, today we present to you Wyatt Thomas Nail and Haley James Torrivio and James Anthony Torrivio and we present Braxton Brady Ellsworth Johnson and we present Jackson Lewis Stephen Nail. <laughs> So called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have your child baptized into Christ by saying, we do? So as you bring your child to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with these responsibilities. To live with them among God's faithful people. To bring them to the word of God and the Holy Supper. To teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Commandments. To place in their hands the holy scriptures. To nurture them in faith and prayer. So that they will learn to trust God. To proclaim Christ in their work and in their deeds. And to care for others in which the God has made. And work for justice and peace. Parents, do you promise to help your children grow in the Christian faith and life by saying, we do. Sponsors. Do you promise to nurture these children in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit to help them live in the covenant of baptism and the communion with church by saying, we do. We do. People of God, we need your help. Do you now promise to support Wyatt and Haley, Braxton and Jackson and James and pray for them in their new life in Christ by saying, we do. I ask you to stand and let us all confess the faith in which we believe together. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God by saying we renounce them? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? We renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? We renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into hell. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation can be seated at this time, and we'll turn to the font. The Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit has moved over these waters, and your word created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you deliver Noah and his family. And through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. And by the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to live with you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, to those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen. Wyatt. Mm -hmm. 
Wyatt Thomas Nail, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And I knight you with the oil. Child of God, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked of the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Haley James Terivio, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And I anoint you with the holy oil. Child of God, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. And James Anthony Torrivio, I now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we're going to anoint Daddy with oil. You are a child of God and forever a child of God always. Amen. And next we have Braxton Brady Ellsworth Johnson. Yep, go ahead and touch it. Yeah. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I anoint you with the oil. Child of God, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Amen. The chair. And last but certainly not least, I present Jackson Lewis Stephen Nail for baptism. I baptize you, Jackson. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You did it, honey. I'm not anoint you with the oil, okay? Child of God, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Let us pray for these wonderful children. We give you thanks, O oh God, that you have claimed these children as your own, that you cleanse them from sin and you raise them to faith eternally to live for you forever. Amen.
the church who have made these. They've been blessed before the altar of God. And as you cover with them, we help you remember that you are covered with prayers and love from this congregation. Good news.